I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Tuesday, September the 24th, 2013. U.S. President Barack Obama spoke at the U.N. General Assembly today, where he addressed several major issues, including, the Iran, including Iran's nuclear program, the crisis in Syria, and the status of Israeli and Palestinian peace negotiations. The president said regarding Syria that his preference has always been a diplomatic one and called for a strong Security Council resolution to make sure that Syria is keeping its commitment and that there must be consequences if they do not. The Syrian government took a first step by giving an accounting of its stockpiles. Now there must be a strong Security Council resolution to verify that the Assad regime is keeping its commitments. And there must be consequences if they fail to do so. If we cannot agree even on this, then it will show that the United Nations is incapable of enforcing the most basic of international laws. On the other hand, if we succeed, it will send a powerful message that the use of chemical weapons has no place in the 21st century and that this body means what it says. Regarding Israel and the Palestinians, Obama reiterated the U.S.'s commitment to a secure Israel, as well as to the right of the Palestinians for a state of their own. The children of Israel have the right to live in a world where the nations assembled in this body fully recognize their country, and where we unequivocally reject those who fire rockets at their homes or incite others to hate them. Likewise, the United States remains committed to the belief that the Palestinian people have a right to live with security and dignity in their own sovereign state. The president said that peace would be a powerful tool against extremists throughout the region. And he said real breakthroughs in Israeli-Palestinian peace, as well as in Iran's nuclear issue, would have a great impact on the entire region. Earlier in the day, U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon gave opening comments at the General Assembly, where he said that the window for the peace process between Israel and the Palestinians was closing fast. Ban added that a two-state solution would secure the long-term interests of the people and of the region. From the face of the earth. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas is also in New York, set to address the U.N. General Assembly this week. And Israel Radio reports that Abbas met with Jewish leaders in the city last night and condemned the killings of the two IDF soldiers by Palestinians in two separate terror attacks over the weekend. As we reported to you yesterday, 20-year-old Staff Sergeant Gabriel Kobe was killed Sunday by a Palestinian sniper near the Jewish quarter in Hebron, and 20-year-old Sergeant Tomer Khazan was killed late Friday night by a Palestinian man who was a former co-worker of his. Abbas is in New York to address the UN General Assembly this week, and his comments followed remarks made by Israel earlier in the day yesterday that the Palestinian Authority had failed to stop violence and incitement against Israel and its citizens. Israel Radio said Abbas condemned the killings yesterday and all other acts of violence against civilians and said that he expected Israel to condemn the recent killing of four Palestinians by Israeli security forces, apparently referring to several Palestinians who were killed during clashes with the IDF in recent weeks when the Israeli soldiers opened fire after they felt their lives were in danger. Abbas made the comments to the Jewish leaders at the meeting last night, hosted by the S. Daniel Abraham Center for Middle East Peace where he stressed the need for a two-state solution and also urged those at the meeting to press the Israeli government to end settlement building in the West Bank. According to the Jewish Daily Forward, the meeting was also attended by former ambassadors, members of Congress, diplomats, and dignitaries, including former U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, and also by U.S. Special Envoy for the Israeli-Palestinian negotiations, Martin Indyk. Meanwhile, peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians are set to continue despite the killings of the IDF soldiers this weekend. And President Abbas is expected to brief President Obama when he meets with him about the status of the talks, including, according to his spokesman Nabil Abu Radene, quote, several Israeli violations and trespasses. 
Obama is expected to also meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Washington at the end of the month, just before Netanyahu addresses the UN General Assembly. Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon said today that the two terror attacks in which the IDF soldiers were killed over the weekend should not raise fears in Israel of a third antifada breaking out in the West Bank. He said the government does not see any connection between the two incidents and that there was no reason for alarm. He said he believes the IDF will be able to calm the situation on the ground. Yalon extended his condolences to the families of the slain soldiers and said that the terror attacks prove that Israel must continue to hold the sword despite being a peace-seeking people. And about 30 members of Israel's Knesset have appealed to Prime Minister Netanyahu to cancel the upcoming release of Palestinian security prisoners in light of the IDF soldiers' killings. The letter was initiated by Knesset member Ayelet Shaked, who's chairwoman of the Habayit Hayyehudi party. She was joined by all members of her faction, as well as lawmakers from the Likud, Shas, and United Torah Judaism parties. The letter read, on the backdrop of the horrifying acts of murder, which took place in recent days, we are asking you to cancel the planned release of terrorists as part of the negotiations with the Palestinians, adding it's unthinkable that a life-seeking country will release prisoners and that terrorist activities will continue at the same time in the middle of negotiations. The next group of Palestinian security prisoners are scheduled for release by Israel at the end of October. Jerusalem's Temple Mount was closed today to thousands of visitors after Israel police received threats of rioting at the holy site. According to police spokesman Mickey Rosenfeld, following a security assessment, police determined that closing the holy site was necessary to protect visitors from possible violence. Visitors expected at the site included Jews making a pilgrimage to the Temple Mount for the Sukkot holiday. Rosenfeld said the situation at the Temple Mount would be reassessed tomorrow and determined then whether or not to reopen. Israel's living memorial to the Holocaust, Yad Vashem, announced yesterday that it had posthumously recognized Italian public figure Gino Bartali as righteous among the nations. The Catholic Bartali was a champion road cyclist who won the Giro d'Italia three times and the Tour de France twice. He was involved in a Jewish Christian rescue network, which was led by Rabbi, Rabbi Nathan Casuto of Florence and the Archbishop of Florence, Cardinal Ilia Angelo della Costa. The rescue network was established after the German occupation of Italy in September of 1943, when Jews began to be deported. Yad Vashem said that Bartali's role in the network was to serve as a courier, transporting forged documents between cities to Jews, concealing them inside the handlebars and seat of his bicycle, risking his life in order to save Jews. According to Yad Vashem, the network saved hundreds of local Jews from formerly Italian-controlled areas, mainly in France and Yugoslavia. Italy will also hold a special ceremony to honor the new title for Bartali, who passed away 13 years ago. The Jewish Federations of North America announced yesterday that Paul Goldenberg, who is the director of the Secure Community Network, was named to a consulting body to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. The Community Network, which is a joint initiative of the JFNA and the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, said that Goldenberg was appointed to a three-year term on the council. The appointment was made by Janet Napolitano before she resigned earlier this month as Secretary of Homeland Security. JFNA President Jerry Silverman said in a statement, With Paul at its helm, SCN has played a vital leadership role in educating our community and raising awareness about security and helping protect our community from potential harm. The Council provides advice and recommendations to the Homeland Security Secretary on matters related to Homeland Security and comprises leaders from state and local government, as well as first responder communities, the private sector, and academia. 
Tonight on Shalom TV, you can catch highlights from the recent Israeli presidential conference in Jerusalem, including Israeli superstar Shlomo Artsy, who will be performing at 7.30, and speeches from former U.S. President Bill Clinton at 8 and former British Prime Minister Tony Blair at 8.30. That's followed by L'Chaim at 9, where Mark Golub is joined by one of American Jewry's leading philanthropists, Michael Steinhardt. That's tonight here on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Tuesday, September the 24th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader.